So here we've got a graph of g of x. It's just a random graph. The graph's already been given to you. And you're asked to sketch the image after reflection in the y-axis. So here we see it written in this form. What we can think, a reflection in the y-axis, which value gets changed, the x or the y? It's the x values that are getting changed, right? So reflection in the y-axis, this is the same as f of negative x. So it's good to kind of make those connections which one is which. So if we're reflected in, in the y-axis, the x values are changing. So this one, this point here, which is at, on the red graph, 5 comma, that's not 4, 5 comma 2, when the x value goes negative, that's going to be over here at negative 5 comma 2. And so that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to take each of the key points and multiply that x value by a negative. So this value is going to go here, this one here, flipped over is going to be 3 there, and this one We'll look at the domain and range of the original one, and then the domain and range of the image graph as well. This time I'm going to use interval notation when doing domain and range. So interval notation, you start at the smallest value and go to the biggest value. The smallest value for the domain for the x values in the red graph starts at negative 3. Oops. starts at negative 3 and goes and includes everything until x is 5. For the range, the smallest value is negative 2. And then the largest value for the y values is positive 2. For your blue graph, the domain, the smallest value is negative 5. The largest value is 3. And the range didn't change. So my question is, we had the graph. We were able to draw it, and we were able to get domain and range from the graph. If the graph wasn't there, but they gave you the domain of the red graph, could you find the domain and range of the blue graph if you had the domain and range of the red graph? Okay? What happened from here to here? It switched because the x values were multiplied by a negative. So here, negative 3, when you multiply that by a negative, it becomes positive 3. And 5, when you multiply that by a negative, becomes negative 5. And everything gets switched because your biggest values now become your smallest values. So how do I know to use y equals f of minus x here? for this one. Well, when it says, and I'll slide this down here, the reflection in the y-axis, when we look at the notes that we made before, f of negative x, all three of these mean the same thing. So in the question, this question said a flip over or reflection over the y-axis. So that's how I know it's connected to f of negative x. And if it had said a flip over the x-axis, then I would know it's related to negative f of x. Okay? And again, the strategy that I use is I think, okay, where is my point? Think of a single point, and where is it going to go? And what value changes, the x value or the y value? And if you're flipping over the y-axis, you're changing along the x-axis. So that's how I know 
that the negative is going to be with the x. All right, so questions you can do for this one. And today we're going to do two examples, and then I'll give you some time to work, and then we'll do another two examples. Um, but for this one, it is 3 and 13. 